I hope you're all well. Thought I'd come on and talk a little bit about jumping up. So jumping up at people is a really common thing. Um, it tends to be started from a very young age. So people will see a puppy and automatically encourage them to jump up to give them a stroke. Or when the puppy does jump up to greet the person, they'll stroke the puppy. So they're massively reinforcing that behaviour. And it's easily done. I'm as guilty as the next person um, for um, cuddling puppies when they're jumping up at me. And But... If you want your puppy not to jump up, your dog not to jump up, you have to massively reinforce what you want instead. So what you're actually looking for is reinforcing being on the floor. For a lot of dogs, that can be really difficult because they're super excited to see you. They're jumping up and down. So you need to practice as much as possible, not just in the moment of when your puppy is particularly excitable. It's not bad. Um, particularly excitable. So, when the puppy's coming towards you, a common thing that I do um, for puppies and adult dogs is I have some food near me at all times. So, you might have a little tub of um, dried food with some really tasty bits mixed in it as well near the front door. And every time you come in the front door, you're going to get a handful, walk in and throw them on the floor towards the puppy or dog. You want to create a bit of distance. So, you want those to land um, a few metres away from yourself. What will happen is the puppy might bypass them and run straight to you the first few times, but you're going to encourage them to go back and find all this nice little um, buffet that's going to have been thrown on the floor. Remember, um, if you've got hard floors, I would probably suggest you have some little bits of hard kibble mixed in with some tastier little bits of chicken. The reason for that is you want that tap on the floor. You want it to make a little bit of a noise to alert the puppy whose food just been thrown on the floor. You're going to repeat that over and over and over and over again. So remember, handful of treats, walk in the door, throw the treats towards the puppy a few metres away from yourself. What will start happening after a while is the puppy will anticipate that that's going to happen and it'll actually stop and not run all the way to you, anticipating that the food will be delivered in the spot that it's always been delivered um, from in the past, which again is a few metres away from you. So pick a particular spot in your house, it might be... So it's in the hallway, three metres up the hallway. It might be in the kitchen, beside the breakfast bar. It might be in the living room, um, near the TV. You pick where you're going to be delivering those treats to and you're, you're going to try and aim it for that area. Um, remember, you don't want sort of surfaces that the treats can bounce underneath because then the puppy's just going to try and dig everything up to try and get them. Um, so you want it accessible for the pup. Like I say, after a while, the puppy will anticipate that the food is going to be delivered from there. And what you'll possibly get, or more likely get, is a puppy that, as soon as he has the door open, it runs, and then it stops and waits in that area. It won't wait for a long time. Remember, all you're getting is a hesitation, a pause, initially. And then you're still going to throw the treats. But now what you're doing is you're actually throwing the treats at, towards the puppy. Remember, it's got to be positive. We don't want to hit the puppy towards the puppy um, and it's been rewarded for standing in that area but remember it's a second that it'll stop still so even if they stop and then run towards you you're still going to throw food in that area it just needs reinforced a little bit longer then eventually what you will get is a puppy that pauses and you're throwing the treats when the puppy's almost finished you're going to throw another treat when the puppy's almost finished that one you're going to throw another treat as soon as it's finished that you're going to throw another treat and now what you're doing is you're rewarding hovering in that area again after a few more um, repetitions so that might be a couple of days of doing this or a couple of weeks of doing this you have a slight pause between each treat that's delivered so what you're doing now is you're reinforcing the puppy so it's a handful of treats then one then a tiny gap then another one then a tiny gap then another one and you're reinforcing that tiny little moment of time of hesitation over there that will massively help your puppy and practice makes perfect. Remember, it's pointless just doing it two or three times and saying, oh, it doesn't work, puppy's not doing it. You need to be practicing these things for weeks or months. And remember, what are they getting at the other times where you're not prepared for it? Are you practicing two or three times and then two or three times um, the puppy's jumping all over you because you haven't been prepared? You're just then in the same position that you were at the beginning. So remember, you need to practice every single time you walk into that room every single time you walk into the house and people can do the same 
so visitors can do exactly the same um, but remember it's the rewarding for staying on the floor that's the important bit that's what we're doing so we're managing the behavior so they're more likely to stay on the floor they're more likely to stay on the floor if they're five feet away from us um, they're not able to jump at us at five feet away from us or what is three three meters in foot I don't know um seven foot <laughs> so you know a good distance away from you they can't physically jump at you being that distance at the same time so that's what i'd like you to try for now and you're going to try that over the next few weeks or months but remember think about what they're rehearsing right are they rehearsing the behavior you like are they rehearsing the behavior you don't like but the whole thing of ignoring wanted behavior and reward wanted behavior is not true because the dog is being rewarded. It's jumping up and down and getting excited. So even if you completely blank them and turn your back on them and turn around and, and sort of don't look at them and don't talk to them and fold your arms, the dogs are still ultimately being rewarded. So you ignoring the puppy isn't really getting the desired result. That's why it tends to fail. And it's a big misconception of let's reward the good and ignore the bad and the puppy will more likely do the good. We need to manage so the puppy is likely to do the thing we like. Remember, to the puppy, it's not good or bad or right or wrong. It's only to us. So you decide what the right thing is and then massively um, um, set the puppy up to succeed to be able to do that or the dog to succeed to be able to do that. Then massively reinforce that over and over and over and over again until it becomes an automatic response. So my dog's automatic response when somebody knocks at the door stay on your bed and like just it has no response they don't even flacker um when somebody comes to my door whether they knock on the door come through the gate dogs might lift their head and then go back to sleep again um because that's that was massively reinforced as a pup we practice over and over and over again and reinforce that just relaxing and lying down um and then it goes from lying down then it goes eventually to relaxation then it goes to just nothing okay so i hope that helps like i say food bomb the puppy initially and um send me some videos when i need to see, when i see videos what i always need to see is before during and after the behavior if you just send me during it's no help whatsoever i can yes i can see the behavior if you send me before i can see what triggers that behavior or what's happening to make that behavior happen um seeing the behavior then in in the moment sorry see the behavior in the moment and then see the consequences of that behavior the reason i need also see the consequences is that will indicate why the puppy's repeating it right. so they're more important to me than the actual behavior the before and after in the video because uh, one person's inter sorry. one person's interpretation might be very different to my interpretation of what's happening okay so i hope that's helpful speak to you all soon Bye for now.